Hello, God bless you. Good afternoon. It's Ellen, Mongan, and Deacon Pat on Deacon and Deer. We've been away for a while, and so here we are today to do it. A show on the Holy Spirit gifts. It's Holy Spirit which, gifts. Which we talked about earlier, but Pentecost is coming up this Sunday, and we thought we'd do a little a series and, t and go into more depth on each of the gifts. Yes, and um, just for your information, we have I'm your co host, Ann DeSantis, and another Bill Snyder. One's in Pennsylvania, Debbie Ann, and Bill lives in Wisconsin. And they often do summits. So it's our second time being invited. So we did a little snippet of the Holy Spirit. Please check out Ann DeSantis and Bill Snyder on Patchwork Ministry and see what they're doing as the uh, many speakers, not just us, with diff different takes on the Holy Spirit. Isn't it Patchwork Heart Ministries? Yes, thank you, dear. See, that's what you're no, he's not dear. I'm dear. Thank you, Deacon. And so now here we go with the show. We um we we've been away for like uh, a couple months. My mom passed away at 97 years old, and so uh, we haven't done as many shows as we like to. And then we, my brother is is suffering with cancer right now. He's in stage four, and we're praying him a miracle. If sure a miracle, he would be going to glory soon. We gotta pray for his salvation and that he's ready to meet Jesus. But we are away because of our 50th wedding anniversary. And that's a gift of the Holy Spirit, fidelity, mm -hmm. right? And 50 years, cheers to 50 years, we should have a wine glass. <laughs> but you know, um, it is, it's, you need the Holy Spirit in your life every day, in your Amen. marriage, in your, in your work, in your play. You need the Holy Spirit to do errands together, <laughs> such as Pat and I are both leaders, and we all have a plan. So we need the Holy Spirit every day, right? Every Amen. Day. And he, he is, he's very good about yielding to the Holy Spirit, and I am too, because we do a surrender prayer every day. Jesus, I surrender this to you. Take care of everything. It's good to learn it. It's like a little novena. Today's a bad hair day for me, so I'm going to be distracted. So let's like take it away, Deacon Pat, and he's the intellectual well, I'm group. Go, I'm going to read, and these are the Isaiah gifts that are mentioned in the Catechism okay. in paragraph 1831. Okay. And it states these gifts are present to the person as long as they remain in a state of sanctifying grace. Yes. They help a person to share in the very life and nature of God now in this life and for eternal life. Okay. So the first is wisdom. And boy, do we need a lot of wisdom in the world today. And if you're raising a family, and we were just talking to uh, a middle-aged man who's got 11 <laughs> children, and from one to you know adulthood, and so um, and struggling with uh, what's going on in his family, and we don't have all the answers, and that's why we need the Holy Spirit in our lives to help us, because only the Holy Spirit really knows what our children need, what we need, uh, and how to deal with uh, what's going on in the world. So wisdom is the ability to judge and order all things in accordance with divine norms, enabling the person to grow in union with God. With this gift, even an uneducated soul can possess the most profound knowledge of the divine. For example, St. Therese of Lisieux had no formal education in theology, and yet she has been declared a doctor of the church. Well, I just like that so much because we just we finished a series on 33 Days to Merciful Love. Was it, was it by Father? Did on Tom Tom? Gately. Gately. It was a great book. And we're, we're still going to do the dedication. However, my ministry that I do separate from, from my podcast and separate from my husband is called Wow Mom, Woman of Wisdom. And I'm a firm believer in the fact that women need women. And I used to be a mentoring woman in one of the churches mm -hmm. that ties mm -hmm. to women. And the wisdom that comes from the Word of God to live your practical everyday life. So I'm big on the, the I'm big on the gift of wisdom because I even though you don't know everything and no one does, you can pass down wisdom and, and experience and use the Word of God to form your children and you're able to teach other women how to do just that. So that's what I think about wisdom, although Pat is a wisdom in our home, right? And he knows something. And he's, he knows lots of stuff, stuff that oh, I never knew. 
Right, and, and knowledge is not the same, and we'll talk about that. But knowledge is not the same as wisdom because uh, you can have knowledge, but what do you do with that knowledge and how do you interpret that knowledge um, is why wisdom is important. See, wisdom comes from the Word of God and the knowledge is, is, is the practical knowledge from learning it along the way. So you need wisdom well, and we'll, knowledge. We'll, we'll read that next. How's okay. that okay. after this? Do you want to sum up wisdom? So you're both leaders. <laughs> so we're sum it up, sum it up. Well, it, it's the ability to judge and order things in accordance with divine norms. Yes, and so that going back to what uh, I said about wisdom, I think women need a mentoring mama, like a Titus II woman, to be in their life. And I think men need the same. And then Pat and I really do believe in when you do an engage weekend or, or continuing marriage education, marriage enrichment, that you should, you should have mentoring couples because mm -hmm. the wisdom comes also from experience. Right. At first, the word of living, God. Then, living out. Living the word of God. Right. And seeing what works and what doesn't. I always just say to my mom, do you remember? I say, Mom, I learned a lot about what to do and not do from your mistakes. <laughs> I did. I, honestly, I so did. And that's why when I raise my children, you look at what your parents did and then you learn from that. You, mm -hmm. do what they, you mm -hmm. don't only do what they do because they didn't work out so good. And then you learn from the Lord Himself and He teaches you as you read His word. That's right. in our wisdom. Knowledge. Knowledge enables a person to judge rightly concerning the truths of faith in accordance with their proper causes and the principles of revealed truth. Under guidance of the Holy Spirit, the human intellect makes correct judgments regarding earthly things and how they are related to eternal life and Christian uh, perfection. Mm -hmm. uh, I, to me, a very real world example is that... Uh, Children who have, quote, gender dysphoria. <laughs> yes, it's a big word. Knowledge and wisdom would mm -hmm. say, okay, that this is probably going to pass, that it may be a stage, mm -hmm. and that we don't think, do things that cause harm. One of the first things in medicine in terms of knowledge is you do no harm. And we are harming children in our culture today because of uh, this issue of gender dysphoria and knowledge would say hey no, look at the truth not the ideology not what you want it to be not feelings but what is really truth here what's really going on yes and I think to be honest uh, as a mother I remember in this as a dad when I was young and they were starting out just even not even in the what was that word again <laughs> But none of that. They were not going that far. But just the era of gay versus happy in what God made you to be, like I am a woman, and there's two sexes, man and woman. I remember the Lord speaking to my soul about being be feminine, dress in dresses, fair Julie. I'm not saying everyone has to do this, but Esther won the heart of the king by being a person used by God in her in her gender. And right. that's what that's what it is. She was used to she spent three years trying, and so I am an Esther woman because I believe in being beautiful for my husband inside and out, and I also believe in men being men. I, I'm not a fan, even when they did the, it's a little thing like this, the pink shirt. Oh, they were fine. Yeah, for someone. But I think the men should be happy in who they are as a gender, and the woman, this will be controversial for some of you. You're probably shaking your head and going, that's really controversial. But to me, if God says it, no, I believe no, it and I do it. Right. Uh, what do you say? Go ahead. It's so. not controversial for God. <laughs> no, he's, he's the, he's God the who one who created us. So. And have you have to say to yourself, how many sexes are there? You don't know the answer. Then read Genesis 1. God created man. And out of his word, he created women. And I just really think that that's a very important truth. And we start, we start messing with truth with God. And how could we be one nation under God if we're not under God? We have to be under God. So please. Let's not pass that like, refresh this with a like a balancing word on knowledge by saying he's gonna be reading. I know it's okay. I go for my heart. My heart says this. I'm so thankful for who I am. And Pat's mm -hmm. thankful. Pat's very manly. In our home, he ruled but not with an iron fist. But he was the man in charge. And the kids to this day, even the one the oldest is forty nine, respect him. And that's a good thing for the man is the head of the home. I don't care how what the woman decides, some finances, she's better at accounting, 
but I'm saying if the man has the respect of being, he is my, he's in charge. When you're a leader and your husband's a leader, someone has to be, it takes a strong woman to lay down her opinion. I'm not saying what that I'm like, mm -hmm. Lisa, Sally, we know I'm not. I have my own opinion, but if Pat says we're not doing that, then we don't do it, and God will bless it for me doing that. But I'm not saying an area is a sin either. You know, an area is a sin or health. You have to know your own body and know what you're doing, and I'm not talking about my body, my life. Okay. <laughs> this is a very controversial subject. Go ahead, okay. speak in. Understanding. Well, do you want to sum it up? No, okay. we're moving on. We're moving on. Understanding. To give a deeper insight and penetration of divine truths held by faith, not as a transitory enlightenment, but as a permanent intuition. This gift not only assists in penetrating revealed truths, but also natural truths insofar as they are related to the supernatural end, because that's what we want for all of us is how to get to heaven with Jesus, how to get to know Jesus, how to be one with Jesus so that we can achieve the spiritual and supernatural end that he wants for each and every one of us. Yes. This gift operates in several ways. For example, disclosing the hidden meaning of sacred scripture, mm -hmm. revealing the significance of symbols and figures, showing the hand of God at work in a person's life, even in the most mysterious or troublesome events like suffering, mm -hmm. and revealing the spiritual realities that underlie sensible appearances, things that we see and sense with our senses. And so, you know, like the uh, hidden meaning of sacred scripture is, okay, how does that scripture apply to your life today and what you are doing? But at the same time, we know that we can be deceived and not fully under fully understand. So we understand with the church, not opposed to the church, but with the understanding of what the church has taught us. Okay, so I have a different meaning of understanding than I think you do. Uh, I just I'm don't... talking about the church's definition here. Right, but I think of this. A mother does not always be born with an understanding heart before she's a mother. When mm -hmm. she becomes a mother, all of a sudden that she knows that if if she tells her, their child, you're, you're being a little cranky, let's go outside because little three-year-olds can't be good all day, then they have to understand that they're only limited in what they could do, you know, so they have the understanding heart. I, I talk about through the sure, mother. Sure, sure. That's, but that's, that's understanding. That's it's partly action. wisdom and knowledge in terms of what can you expect of a child depending on their age and mm -hmm. what, what you know, has been going on. But they have the gift life, of understanding so. that? So it's a, as we read each one of these, there's an interplay of all of them. Okay. I think, I think, um, I think understanding, though, is a gift. It really is. Because Pat sure. and I were the suck-it-up parents. We were like, oh, you got this one. We'll pray for you. Go to school. I don't care if you have a fever. Not that they had high fever. It probably mm -hmm. was like a, a fever in their own imagination. But we weren't the parents. We were like, I'm so sorry. You have fever. What can I get you? Ten popsicles and a cookie. Yeah. <laughs> we were those That's a different idea so of understanding. Thinking, but, I mean, like, we were the, more the parents. It's more like, like compassion. But... Oh, compassion? Okay. Okay. So understand the scriptures. I remember the day that Pat and I gained the meaning of Job. And it was, right. Job was not just a book we read and, oh, poor Job, and, oh, patient, the patient of Job. But Job was a person that went through the fire for a really long time with a lot of friends turning their back on him. And then at the end of the chapter, come to behold, it wasn't all bad because at the end of the chapter, through the conversations and even from, from chatting, and the and the suffering, suffering. he learned to know God for himself. And Amen. that kid... God didn't get mad at the friends, but he had, he had Job pray for the friends because Job was in the right standing with God, which it looked like to the friends he wasn't. So I think that when you when that scripture pops out at you, you're reading, and all of a sudden you go, oh, that's my word for the day. Uh, apple, uh, uh, no, that's my word for the day. Every dog returns to their vomit. If my kids do that thing again, <laughs> I'll tell them every dog returns to their vomit. So it's important to, that's the understanding we're talking about. Mm -hmm. See, that kind of teaches me every day, and that's why we have our prayer time together. Go ahead. Counsel. Counsel. To something? render the individual docile receptive to the counsel of God okay. regarding one's actions in view of sanctification and salvation. Primarily, this gift enables a person to judge individual acts as good and ought to be done or as evil and ought to be avoided. 
Okay. Therefore, this gift prompts the person to ask himself, will this act lead to holiness? Will this act lead to heaven? Mm. And that's that's great, those two questions. Okay. But at some point, you want to grow to the point of where it's, and it's, there are many things that are objectively, we can say, well, that's not good or that's bad. But then there is many times we have choices of doing two good things and wisdom helps us and knowledge and understanding helps us decide which is it that God wants us to do. You could have two good choices and one God doesn't really want you to do. And mm-hmm. so uh, that's, again, like I say, all these, we need these all working together, all these gifts. And I think when you don't know the answer and you do, you go to wise counsel. We have this one friend in our prayer chain. We call her June the wise counsel. That's her last name. <laughs> Because she has wisdom, and she tells the counts she counsels us, and I think it's an important feature. And that goes back to the mentoring mamas, the the couples that um, mentoring couples, and the, the fathers, the older man teaches the younger man. Well, why does God do that? Well, as they get older, there's a stage of life where they have known and walked things that the other people have not walked. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's counsel right. as well. The gift of counsel, none of these gifts come; they come at confirmation, right? Correct. Correct. All these gifts come at confirmation. Baptism first, and then confirmation. And it's just like a muscle. I have I have very mu- little muscle tone right now. I got to get back to work it out because I had so many injuries. But the more you use it, the more mm-hmm. you gain it. Mm-hmm. And God can like pour into your spirit these gifts that we just talked about, which were wisdom, understanding, counsel, three of them only. Don't you? And knowledge. And knowledge. Okay. Because you only pour in as much as you're empty and, and seeking. But you can have it. They're inside you. The Holy Spirit comes down upon you. We have all. As I understand the Isaiah gifts, you have all given it Correct. confirmation. So, just a little tidbit from learning from Deacon Pat. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> okay. Fortitude. Wow. We hear about that, don't we, in terms of do you have fortitude in the world and dealing with the world or in sports and uh, work? Well, fortitude is the ability to overcome difficulties or to endure pain and suffering with the strength and power infused by God. Wow. Give strength to the person to resist evil and persevere to everlasting life. Mm-hmm. And so uh, one of the things that helps us with fortitude is as we're growing up and in life is the ability to deal with difficulties um, and uh, to suffer maybe pain and uh, while you're at work, depending on your work, or if you're a military person, um, in terms of being able to work or get through the pain and the, the you're exhausted and the, those are things that are really good qualities that you can learn in other like sports and uh, things that can help you actually in the spiritual also mm-hmm. in terms of as yeah. you're dealing with uh, uh, evil and persevere to everlasting life in terms of people who are trying to turn you away mm-hmm. and, and uh, having the fortitude to say, no, I'm not going that way. I'm not going that path because it's not the godly path. It's not the path that Jesus has for me. And we go to, we go to a church now called St. Teresa of Avila. We used to go to Holy Trinity, we love both churches in this diocese. There's a lot of good priests in Santa Dice, a lot of we have great bishops. We love all churches. But St. Teresa says, you look at the cross on this side, and then you look above the altar, there's a circle that said, says, God withholds nothing from those who persevere. And every time I read that, I go, wow, Lord. And what a promise that is. Mm-hmm. You have to persevere through strength. And I just got this one today. Today, as we see these virtues, it is all about parenting to me because that's my mindset today on virtue. Because I just wrote a book called Help. I want to be a godly gal. It's all about virtue. But as we parent people, if we bail them out, we have one child, I won't say who, that he was the last one. <laughs> Pat would call the dishes from I'd go, no, let him do the dishes. But Pat would always be generous in his love. For this little Sean, and not that I mentioned his name, but now he's a great, accomplished, whole virtue guy. Right. However, at the time, at the time, I was like, all the other kids were told, you know, time for chores. Everyone pick a chore and do them. And I think chores and sports, and I think that um, going to church, even though they don't want to, or 
maybe even having a rule that you dress up for church until they're about teenage level and then you don't have that kind of ability to make them do what you want them to do and that can go into controlling parents so we were never the helicopter parents right mm -hmm. we were never the people that said you have to eat your peas at least i was not that mother and so just let them make a few choices but when they persevere like we always say if you choose a sport you finish out the year you finish out the season mm -hmm. remember yeah. and if you choose a, a, a trip yeah, that's right. Say, say that. You get to choose, but once you've made your decision, you have to stick to it. It's like it's like choosing a marriage. If you bail your child out, okay, mm -hmm. then they're not gonna have the ability to persevere in marriage. I got the littlest thing goes wrong. I'm not talking about something off in thin land like abuse, but I'm talking about there's days. Mama said there'd be days like that, and then there's other days. So how do you want to share your story about Terrell? <laughs> no, you don't want to share. Okay, sorry. You don't want to share it. Wow. No, okay, he doesn't want to show. Okay, so anyways, there are times you, you say to people, you chose and you got to stick with it. Right. Right, and so that, I'm sorry, he doesn't want to show that. That's okay. We don't have a script, as you can tell, yeah. and that is the beauty of being on podcasts, because if you have a script, then the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit doesn't have room to say, like Pat will say, no, we're not sure yeah. that's fine. But Wisdom that's... would say that was a bad choice. Anyway, okay. uh, piety, to give filial worship to God precisely as our Father and to relate with all people as children of the same father. Here a person shows reverence for God as a loving father and respects others as children of God precisely because that is what they are. And, and of that gift, I, I have to be honest, I mean, I struggle more with that gift. When you see the, the things that are going along, around in our culture, in our society that affect us, in very negative ways or affect our children, especially our grandchildren in negative ways. Sure. It's sometimes really hard to think of them as children of God, but they are. Every Even the worst of persons, even the worst human being, is still a child of God. So on the positive end, can you give an example? I like example of people. People take all the story, they can hear all the knowledge, and then the story is what sticks with them. So what would you say about piety, a story? Like it's something you can relate to in piety, not for you necessarily. Or... Well, it, well, like I said, in terms of how you relate to others and think of them and, and how you uh, relate to your own parents as an adult, uh, you know, in terms of um, how do we help our children see God as a loving father if I'm not a loving father? Hmm. Because uh, children um, obviously... Um, see us as when they're very young as parents we are god to them because we provide them with everything protect them give them food mm -hmm. sure. um, and it. so but we need to show the example in terms of how uh, we go to church on a regular basis and and appreciate god and are thankful for what god has done uh, for us um, and uh, our duty to go to church on a regular basis and to pray and to be those kinds of examples. Um, uh, I see piety as like in church, you fold your hands, close your eyes, and, and be attentive to Mass. No one knows what's going on inside yes. your heart. Your heart could be going like you be in Disney <coughs> World. It could be like that's, the yes. mall and your mind are thinking That's all part but of it. But to make the, put the example, you know, always it's, I was taught you make the right move, like choose joy or choose patience, and you may not feel like it, eventually you will. I think of piety a lot of when I'm wearing the veils now. I think that that's a very good example because I struggled with that. And I didn't want to be judged as like, I think I'm so awesome wearing the veil because I didn't feel awesome at all. I want to wear these cute hats, you know, I said, oh, you saw I was wearing mm -hmm. the veil and feel like that's what right thing to do. God wants that. But I was, I was actually wanting to wear the cute hats. And so I one time went to a, a intercessory prayer team with, um, at the elder community. And there was this one man there who was very much, um, he ch was challenged physically. And so um, he heard the Lord say, in his heart, kneel, and he kneeled down. And I heard the Lord say the same thing before he even did it, so I knew it was the Lord for me, and I kneeled down. But then the effort he had to make to stand back up was, to me, piety. He knew it was going to hurt. He knew he was going to kneel, and that he was going to have to stand. And, and he, he, it, he struggled. And I watched, you know, you watch you now, and watch, and I thought, man, his kneeling meant so much more than mine, because he... He mm -hmm. was he was a holy man was trying to please the Lord over his own 
potty telling him this is gonna hurt. Hey, so I think piety is so many facets. Sure. And there's so many children that have piety at a young age, cultivate it, you know. If they say, Mommy, I wanna go to mass every day, take them, if they're, you know, take them. Let them be with themselves. <laughs> and finally, a fear of the Lord, uh, which enables a person to avoid sin and attachment to created things out of reverence and love of God. And the, this gift of fear arouses in the soul a vibrant sense of adoration and reverence for the majesty of God and a sense of horror and sorrow for sin. A genuine relationship with God is based on love, not fear. And that's that's the important thing is that, you know, some people, um, I think, you know, they come to church and they go to church and uh, out of a fear of going to hell. And that's okay. That's a, a start. But that's not what God wants. God wants us to uh, be fearful of being separated from him mm -hmm. um, because we want to love him and want his love. And he's always offering his love even when we sin because and we know we sin every day. But uh, we should uh, want to get rid of the sin in our lives because that's what God wants for us and, and it's best for us. He wants the best for us. And uh, as uh, uh, you know, the idea you hear very often is to be the best version of yourself. I hear that. Yeah. Matthew Kelly. Matthew Kelly. And so um, that, that's a good thing. But that best version of yourself, only God knows what that's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And just because someone's doing some kind of act of piety or some kind of reading a certain Bible study to get wisdom or just because they, they have to like they have together as a mother or father and don't worry you have what god's given you and if you need something god's gonna provide it He'll put a person a place or a thing in the way to show you and grow it very close but i think of fear of the lord differently that, i mean not differently this when i say differently i say i'd like to give an example and um i think it, it really does mean if someone says, you know, they don't want out of love for Christ, I'm going to avoid that movie. Or out of love for Christ, I'm going to turn off the channel. Or out of mm -hmm. love for Christ, sin isn't funny to God. And I learned that mm -hmm. the hard way is, um, I, um, I just, I just feel like I learned it the way that some, I met some people that were not of our faith, and they said, oh, it's okay though. It's under the blood. It's just, it's not, you know, God forgive right. it. It was such a non. Fear of the Lord thing, but I don't even know who the person was. I do remember, I remember right where I was. I remember what restaurant I was outside talking and having a good conversation. I thought, no, no. See, it hurt Jesus to shed His blood for us. It hurts. It hurt Jesus to be mocked and crucified. It hurt him the most that his, all his friends deserted him. It hurt him the most when someone's suffering. Not love for Christ, you stand mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. But fear of the Lord is is an attitude of the heart. It's not, and you could out of the of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you know if they're really, like, if they're going, man, it's okay. God will forgive that. Right. And I think that's a good example in the sense of um, when you think of the passion and what Jesus went through, it's easy it's to say, oh, well, he did that. But no is what we need to think. And part of, I think, of piety and fear of the Lord is to understand, I put him there. That's right. I put him on the cross. It's my sin mm -hmm. that's right. that put him there. Mm-hmm. And that could change everything. Don't you think it changed once you realize, you know, that we are the sinners? It's not you, judgment. Judgment just dies right there. You don't look at someone else and going, "Oh, look what they just did," because you know that you, that we are accountable to any sin we could do if we stay not in the umbrella of His love. And so, Deacon Pat, what else do you want to say? Are you summing it up, or are we, are we on to this? I didn't know if we did. I think part that, that two. We've, we've covered them, and or you want to repeat and, them? and I'll just read them off, and then. The next session, we're going to start to talk about uh, Paul's gifts of the Spirit, the Pauline gifts. And I say that because Paul mentions them in his epistles and letters, that these were gifts that the Spirit uh, had given him and the apostles and other people. Besides the gifts uh, that we have here, we all get the Isaiah gifts. Yeah. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge piety, and fear of the Lord. So now, the Pauline gifts are given for the building up of the body of Christ, to serve the body of Christ. So now you listen to the show on the Holy Spirit, the gifts, Isaiah gifts of the Spirit, 
take a time of study and, and look at all the lists and see what one am I lacking? Because it's like we said, the um, confirmation, the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is poured in your soul and you have the ability to ask the Lord, I need wisdom on this one, Lord. Can you give me some understanding of this scripture, Lord? And you'll be able to reflect and think about ways you can grow in each one of those as mm -hmm. you use them, just like the muscle. Amen. So we're traveling along, along singing a song side, side by side. side. God bless, God you. bless you.